All right, so here's a here's a problem on coalitional game, and we're trying to find the core of this game. And this game is defined in a way that we have three players, and the value function, so the worth worth of coalition of one, two, and three. So when three people get together, um, that's worth the same amount as um the coalition of two players, so one and two or one and three um and say that's the or that gives you the worth function value of one and also in other cases where a player two and three kind of get together like that's worth the same as the players just playing by themselves like a coalition of just one person one person or one person in that case they worth nothing. So imagine that, that there's a case like that. So what's the core of this game, which is the solution to this game? It's more like so what do you what do you mean by the solution of this game? So first of all, um we're saying that when three, when the player two and three get together, the total utility that they can get so it's basically like if these two people get together, um, the money they can get as a whole is zero. And likewise, if if the player one was to work by himself, he gets no utility. And likewise, player two, player three can't get anything um, by working themselves alone. Um, but here, here we're saying that if player one and player two and three were to get together, um, they will have a um, reward of, or how should I say it? So value of coalition of one that they can share it among themselves. Um, so that's basically what it means. And likewise, if the player one and player two just get together, um, that's worth, uh, that's, uh, that means they're gonna get a utility of one that they can share. And when we say share, we specific specifically mean that we're assigning um, the total pool of utility among the players. So say, so say the assignment, was it called assignment? I think it was, just a moment. Assignment. Oh, actually, no. Allocation. So allocation is basically how you allocate that total um, utility pool among, excuse me, the players. So if I said one third, one sixth, and two sixth, actually make it two. So, so when we so that's saying the player one gets um half and the player two gets one sixth and player three gets two over six um so that that's and obviously they're sharing the total utility that they can they could have got which is one so yeah that's, that's basically what allocation is and we're trying to find the allocation which satisfy the satisfy the which satisfies the property of core. Well, obviously we have to visit the definition of core. Core is a allocation um, that satisfies um, X and and of s greater than or equal to v of s. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Oh yeah. And we sort of alluded to the definition of allocation, but there are some constraints 
to allocation. So it has to make sense basically from the perspective of the individual individual players and also the game as a whole. And the first condition for something to be an allocation is that it has to be feasible. Um, and we basically mean that if we sum up all the uh, so say we allocated it as one over two and one over six and two two over six. Um, so this say this is an allocation, then it has to be such that these three um, add up to less than the value of the coalition of everyone. So in this case, if three people were to get together, the total pool of like utility that they can share is one. And obviously, if this were to be greater, uh, less than that, that does that. I mean, if this was to sum up to greater than that, like in, like that, it doesn't make sense. So we're saying that it has to be less than or equal to this. And what do you mean by? Uh, actually, no, we're talking about the conditions for something to be an allocation. So second one is it has to maintain individual uh, individual um, rationality. And what what that basically means is um, if we have an assignment, then it has to be such that two over six. So if we call this like um, x1, which is the amount of utility that the player one gets, and this is x2, x3, this has to be such that x1 is greater than or equal to um, the value of the coalition by themselves, so they have to get at least as much as they could if they acted, uh, if they formed the coalition by themselves, so working by himself. And similarly for that has to be this, and for that it has to be that. Okay, so this is the basic I mean, this is the condition for something to be an allocation. And when I say something, it's a vector x, which assigns um, utility to each player. Anyways, that, cut, that sort of got pretty long, but I think that was worthwhile. <coughs> and we have to make it such that it, satisfied, it satisfies this property, which is basically um, for any any coalition S, um, the value of that coalition has to be less, no, less or equal to um, addition of the utility that was assigned to the allocation, I mean players up to allocation. So say if we took the subset of um, like player one and two. In that case, this has to hold. So, yeah. So that's what we have. Okay. So let me just bring it down. Hmm. This thing is very convenient. Anyways, so where was I at? I think I was talking about, yeah, sorry. I get lost quite easily. <clears throat> so, so let's write down the conditions. Okay, for something to be a core, it has to be, like we we're talking about assignment. So, so first of all, um, 
it has to satisfy the individual ra rationality condition. So that would be x1 is equal to or greater than v1. So better than if they were to form a coalition by themselves. x2 has to be greater than that. x3 has to be greater than or equal to that. Yeah, that was an individual rationality condition. Individual rationality condition. And what about the feasibility condition? It had to be that um, if if we um, if we added the allocation, the utility for each player, then it cannot be greater than the allocate, I mean, the value of the, the worth of the coalition of all the players, okay? <clears throat> and obviously n was one, two, three. And let us replace it with some like friendly values. So we said v1 is equal to zero, v2 is also equal to zero, so on. So this, we can replace it with zero. This also we can replace it with zero. And the same goes for this one. What about this one? Well, this is one because v of one, two, three is equal to one. And okay, this, if anything satisfies, uh, if if an assignment is to be a proper assignment, it has to satisfy these properties, okay? And also, it has to satisfy, if that assignment was to be a core, um, so we're talking about an assignment x equals x1, x2, x3, where this is how much player one gets, this is how much player two gets, and this is how this is how much player three gets. It has to satisfy the property of this. So for any subset of player, I mean subset of coalition, any coalition or subset of the players, it has to be such that the um, allocation gives the uh, gives m more or uh, at least as good it has to be at least as good as the subsets value function um so it'll be clear if i write it down like so we already accounted for the case where we take the subset of each player so like that already accounted for s being equal to x1, s being equal to x2, and same for that one. So we're not going to care about that. I mean, we already have that equation written down. Sorry, I'm, I think I'm taking too long doing these things. Say we took the, oh, there are like, how many ways? A few ways to select the subset. So one would be x1, x2, and the other would be x2, x3, and the other one would be x1, x3. So, uh, and the last one would be x1, x2, x3. So, this has to be greater than or equal to value of this coalition. and. And the important thing, I guess, is no it's noting that we're only taking these two values for this specific case. So say x was like one one of a two, um, one of a two, say one of a three, and oh, I picked the wrong value. I'm just making a value up, but it also requires some delicacy. So we're saying um, 
this plus that, even though we already considered um, the whole utility, we're only taking what is in the subset, okay? That's very important. Anyhow, move on. X1 plus X2, it has to be greater than or equal to that. And taking that subset, X2 plus X3, um, you know where it's going, X1 plus X3. Sorry, I'm just a bit tired. One, three, X1 plus X2 plus X3 is greater than or equal to V of one, two, three. Okay. Hmm. So this is taking actually really long. I'm not sure if I sh should just make a shorter version of this. It's not meant to take this long, but to understand what's going on, it's sort of like important to go through all these steps. Okay. So let's replace it with values. So what is the value of the coalition of one and two? Well, it's one, what about two and three? It's zero. zero. And what about this? One and three, that was one, one, two, three. Oh, that's easy, one, okay. Well, we notice one very interesting thing. This one and this one, right? What does that imply? X1 plus X2, X3 can't be less than one. I mean, can't be greater than one and can't be less than one. So obviously it has to be exactly one. So that means we can actually eliminate, why is this not working? Yep. We can, since we already considered both of conditions with this one equation, we can eliminate it. So eliminate as in, we don't have to care about this anymore. We basically reduced it down to a simpler problem. Okay. And equation is always good because you can then substitute it into other inequalities, which can give you a very nice solution. Imagine you added these two equations. You get two X1 plus X2 plus X3, which is greater than or equal to two. You're just basically adding this and that, which gives you this, adding this and that, which gives you this, okay? Yeah, and a very cool thing to note is that if you if you were to substitute that into this one, well, I'll write it clearly for you. So imagine that you wanted to rewrite this equation. So I, I'm just saying one to indicate that these are the same equations. X1 plus X2 plus X3. And we said X1 plus X2 plus X3 is one. These are equivalent, so we can replace it. It doesn't matter if there are variables, you can replace it like that. So that means x1 plus 1 is greater than or equal to 2, which is x1 being greater than or equal to 1. Easy, right? Okay. So here we got to a very interesting um, place, and I shouldn't have deleted one of the conditions because I, you remember where this came from? Sorry, I deleted it. It came from x1 plus x2 plus x3 not being greater than or equal to 1, and x1 plus x2 plus x3 being greater than or equal to 1. Yeah, so, and these simultaneously just give it, give this, this equation. But, if x1 had to be at least 1, this is at least 1. What values can these take? Well, if that's 1, 
if I were to assign any value greater than zero, or, oh yeah, greater than zero to x2 and x3, remember x2 and x3 can only be greater than or equal to zero. So we can't even go below x, I mean, below zero. So if we were to replace that with one, like that's the minimum value that x1 takes. Can we put any values other than zero to these? No. So, and what about x1? Can it take any value greater than one? Well, if we were to put that, like even a very slight amount, will be, will not be greater. Um, I mean, it won't be less than or equal to one. So that doesn't hold. So the only only um, allocation that satisfies all these properties, or I could say conditions, is where x, so it's the allocation x1, x2, x3, such that x1 is equal to one, x2 is equal to zero, x3 is equal to zero, which is x, one, zero, zero. Okay. Oh, okay. That got really long. I mean, like you could have done it really quickly, by the way. I'm just gonna show you a really quick, quick way of doing this. It's not really a quick way, but then if you're used to it, I mean, I only learned about this just today, but you get, you can see where, like, it's really easy to figure out the solution to this. So, uh, first of all, note that this is always gonna be there. This is always gonna be a, a condition. V of one, two, three, and x one plus x two plus x three is going to be greater than or equal to one, two, three. Where does this come from? This comes from feasibility condition. Where does that one come from? Well, that was from the core condition because any allocation has to be better than the value, the worth of the, the worth of any coalition. Okay. So that includes when S is equal to N where S is a subset of players or coalition. <clears throat> and that immediately gives um, x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to one. Well, we have that. And we also know that we're gonna end up with something like this. We of using the core definition, obviously. Like if we take any subset, we get this kind of thing, two and three, x one plus x three is greater than or equal to v one three. And we just check the values. It doesn't check, take that long, by the way. That's one, that's one, that's zero. And you just combine any of these two. So I combine these two. And if I combine these, these, you get two x one plus x, two plus x three, which is greater than or equal to two. And we have this. Imagine substituting that into here, you get x one is greater than or equal to one because you already saw it. So I, don't, I mean, yeah, because x, x one plus x two plus x three is one. So you can just move it around. So you have that and you already know from here that, yeah, indeed, x1 has to be x, uh, has to be one. And if x1 is one, that's one and that's one, by the way, then these two have to be zero. So we have the core, which is assignment that, I mean, allocation that satisfies the core property, which is one, zero, zero. Okay. Hope you found that helpful and yeah, see you next time. Bye.